Welcome back to another edition of The Check-In. My name is Jarrett, and I'm once again joined by Colby, who is a fellow colleague here at Compass. Today, we're going to answer the super simple question, why you should be solo mining. So, Colby, in order to do this, could you go ahead and maybe give us some historical background on solo mining or just mining in general? Well, Satoshi Nakamoto mined their first block and uh, on the, you know, on the verge of bailout. And um, so solo mining is deeply rooted in the, in the origins of Bitcoin and pool mining came on the scene with uh, slush pool now known as brains pool. And now the vast majority of the network is secured by pooled mining. But I think that um, solo mining still presents interesting opportunity just ask the people that have actually hit blocks solo and got to keep all of the Bitcoin mining rewards from those blocks. Yeah. And we've seen that happen multiple times. I feel like in the last six months, at least I've seen it on X, a couple of people hitting. Do you have some information on that? Yeah, I have my notifications turned on for uh, the CK pool uh, dev, the guy that maintains CK pool, which is what most people are using to solo mine these days. Um, that's really interesting. I love getting the notification when someone hits a solo block, especially because I'm solo mining. And of course, you know, I want to get super lucky and hit that block myself. Yeah. Can you actually, and then I've got my solo miner here. Can you actually talk about the solo miner you have? I actually have more than one uh, online currently hashing. This bad boy right here, I picked up uh, in Prague from the Brains team. This is one of their first units that I actually did a review on as well, if people want to look that up, the review of the BMM 100. Uh, and this is Brains hardware that they're releasing. They're coming out with hardware control boards and also these really cool desktop mini miners. So this bad boy is sitting on my desk all day, every day, uh, and guessing about a trillion hashes per second, hoping to get that correct nonce. I love that. I will just, since we're doing a show and tell situation, I've got, uh, bring it a little bit closer to the screen. Kanan, Kanan, I'm not really sure how we're pronouncing that, but I got this actually at Nashville. So I guess this is a shout out that when you go to a Bitcoin conference, you should come back with a solo miner. You got yours at BTC Prague. I got mine in Nashville and we will have, we'll put up some images right now of both of those. Yours is doing, mine's I think a four Terra hash. And anyways, this is a good reminder for me that I need to get the power supply to really get that going. Cause I, I was going to say, I was going to say right now online. yours is zero Terra hash. Yeah. You saw how Colby's was plugged in. You can see how mine is a, a free floater. I, I just need to get that. And that's on my to-do list this week. But if we could now let's go and answer the question, which is why should someone be uh, solo mining today? I think the left curve simplistic answer is so that someone can earn some Bitcoin, right? I think the reason that you would be solo mining is similar to why you would be pool mining. And it's basically because you want some Bitcoin, albeit those are two very different things, right? Those are two very different things. But I think that as long as the incentive is aligned, uh, people are going to continue to buy these. I mean, this is the Avalon 3, which leads me to believe that. And I know that they've had other prototypes and they're putting them out. You and I actually, before we hopped on here, we were talking about Bitax and the way that is definitely moving forward. And uh, Compass may have some stuff with Bitax moving forward. I'll just leave that there as kind of an Easter egg. Um, but any final thoughts on why you should be solo mining? You've said the incentives. For me, it's kind of like, I think it adds to the network. It, it, in some sense, decentralizes, even though I know that one little solo miner compared to, as you've called out, like, you know, a massive pool or just some of the, any one of the pub codes, it may not feel like that. But for me, it feels at least like I'm doing my part in here. I'm going to insert the meme of uh, Starship Troopers, right? I'm doing my part. Um, but any other ideas other than the incentive? Like, does this allow you to feel more connected to the Bitcoin community? I love that. Yes, it does. And I, I don't think you should discount that. As in, I think that it absolutely does decentralize the network. Reason being, solo miners actually do hit blocks, right? So every solo miner that hits a block 
takes a massive amount of revenue away from public miners and pooled mining, really. So I would not discount that point that it does discount, or, or rather that it does decentralize the Bitcoin mining network. It certainly does. Bitcoin miners solo actually do get extremely lucky and hit blocks as recently as block, what was it? Block number 853.742. That is the first uh, recorded block that was hit probably by a bit axe. And the reason we know that is because the worker name had bit axe in it and the hash footprint of that miner matched that of a open source bit axe. So I think that's really exciting. Um, other reasons and, and might be worth mentioning that other reasons to solo mining is instead of just running a, you know, a very small desktop miner, maybe you have an S19 that's currently underwater hosted. And maybe since you realize that it's underwater, maybe you want to just risk it for the Bitcoin biscuit and direct that to solo mine. Now, of course, that is a risk and you basically know that you're going to get nothing unless you have a really, really, really great day and you are able to hit a block and then you keep the block subsidy of 3.125 plus fees. Well, if the BitAx can do it, if you have an S19 and as you said, it's underwater at current hash price, it's not the worst thing, especially if maybe you've already been stacking some cheaper sats throughout the bear market while mining when the S19 was maybe a little bit more profitable. But anyways, yeah, I think being connected to the network and I think adding more decentralization to the network, I kind of want to say. And once again, I know that that's more philosophically true than uh, true in reality. But either way, solo miners are very cool. So Colby, thank you for hopping on. Make sure if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe. If you're listening to us on a podcast platform, please go ahead and subscribe. Follow us on X, LinkedIn, and YouTube at Compass Mining. And Colby, thanks once again for hopping on the check-in. Thanks, Jared. My pleasure. See you next time.